welcome back again to our short series on how to make your own soaps, lotions and washing soap. And in our last demonstration I showed you how to make a beautiful ivory soap, beautiful white ivory soap. And now we will make a charcoal and shea butter soap for your face, which is also excellent for people with eczema and other problems, skin problems. Um, before we start, I've already weighed out the oils, I've weighed out the lye, the water. And before you start, if you're going to make something that is more complicated, see to it that you have everything weighed out. My essential oils I've already put aside, and then the charcoal that we're going to add to the soap is also put aside. I mixed uh, two teaspoons of charcoal with a little bit of oil, so it's ready to go in with the oils. And um, yes, so, and also be ready, put some ice water aside so that you can cool down your lye because your lye is going to heat up very quickly and um, that is a good measure to take. So firstly, we are going to take our water and our lye. Now remember in the, the last demonstration I said never pour the water onto your lye. Always pour the lye into your water for safety's sake, it might just volcano. And once we've got this done, we're going to put it in the cold water. I'm just going to add the ice to it. Right. Remember the safety measures. Rem remember to cover your body, cover your arms, cover your hands your legs and also your glasses. Never forget that, your goggles. And also keep vinegar at hand. If anything spills, just pour some vinegar onto, onto your lye. Right, so here we go, very carefully. And remember last time I said, move away once you've put the lye into the water. Stir a little bit, move away so that you don't breathe the fumes. And so we will continue to do that again. Carefully put it in there and then we will stir it and you will see fumes come up in a short while and then I'll move away. Turn and stir another few seconds, but don't breathe it. And then move away again. Okay, you can see that the fluid has cleared a little bit, so now it's safe to breathe around it. It's best to take your lye and your water outside where the air is fresh and there's a breeze. So this I'm going to put aside, or at least I'll put it in the cold water straight away. We're going to heat up our oils. As you can see, there's hard oils and soft oils. So we want to melt the hard oils into the soft oil. This will take a short while. And there should be no pieces of hard oil visible must be completely melted. Okay, what we have in this recipe is we have avocado oil, castor oil, coconut oil, olive oil and shea butter. Now the shea butter is also a hard oil, the coconut is hard oil and this recipe is excellent for people that do not want to use palm oil. Um, there's no palm oil in this recipe and but you can make a beautiful soap without the palm oil just using the coconut and the shea butter makes a lovely soap so keep stirring and when it's all melted we will measure the temperature and remember the two temperatures must be the same you must have more or less 40 to 43 degrees celsius on both there can be a variance of about two to three degrees but preferably try and keep them pretty close together, the same, same temperature. And uh, then we will come back and we will mix them and make soap.
Right, we now have both solutions at more or less the same temperature, um, 41 degrees, 40 degrees, so we, I'm pretty happy with that. The lower your temperature, if, it's, if you're going to do a lot with it and add a lot of um, colorants and additives, it's better to mix at a lower temperature than a higher temperature. So let's do this. Stick, use a stick blender for that. Remember that we said don't start blending right away. Just stir and add as you stir. Now before I do that I want to tell you quickly we're going to separate the batter. Some of it will go into a in, into this um, jug and the rest I will color with with the, with the charcoal. Remember the safety procedures. Always have your goggles on when you do this. Okay, so you can see it's already beginning to homogenize a little bit. I'm going to do a, a very low trace, not a um, strong trace, it'll just be a very light trace um, when we add all the additives. Okay. Once again, I'm not going to let it trace completely. I'm going to just, just under the trace or just at the, low, at the light, light trace. You see the color changing? It's beginning to get closer to trace. Okay, at this point I'm going to pour some of this out so that I can keep the white color as you can see in the soap and the rest will be charcoal. Okay, now the charcoal. I've already mixed the charcoal with some oil so that it won't be, um, it'll be easier to mix this way. Two teaspoons of charcoal normal activated charcoal that you use for when you're sick, <laughs> same thing. Right, and now we will blend it in until we reach trace and then we will add our essential oil. Remember that I said this is excellent for skin problems, acne, it's antibacterial, it'll help your skin. You can see a light trace, can you see the little, little droplets on top? It's a light trace. And now I will add my essential oil. And sometimes, as I said, essential oils might speed up the tracing. So if it does, then you have to work very quickly to get it into the mold. Okay. It's two tablespoons of lavender oil, lavender essential oil. A 
that's a nice trace if you can see that. Okay, Okay, I think that's good enough. Right, now I'm going to take this mold because I want to do something interesting and I hope it will work out. I'm going to pour some of this into the mold and then I'm going to pour the, the neutral one and I'm going to do that over a spoon so that it doesn't sink completely in. You're going to just pour it gently over the, the charcoal layer. This is such fun. I think if you once you start making your own soap, you'll never stop doing this. You see this one has become more thick. Okay, that's good enough. It's a lot like baking. If you like baking cookies and cakes, you will like making soap. Right, now, I'm going to clean this up. Now I'm going to add this layer to it again. And then we will do something interesting. to get all of it out you need to scrape it out now this soap is different to the other one that I made because this one we are going to insulate we want it to go through a gel phase where it heats up and it gels so you will see how that works in a, s in a moment Okay, clean it up a bit and now I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to take a homemade contraption to, I'm going to stick it in and then pull it up and stick it in and pull it up so that you try and get, so, so that you try and get um, the flames in the colors. Um, it's just a normal piece of wire that I bent and I put a normal straw over it to give it that um, thickness. So here we go. You go down, you go up, go down and up, and down and up, and down and up. One more time and gently out at the edge. There we go. So I'm going to stick in there. So now I'm going to just smooth this over. If you want to, you can make a pattern on it again like we did with the other one. Or you can just leave it plain. Um, I think I'm going to leave it plain. And we'll see how it, what it looks like when it's done. Smooth it out and give it a shake or two because you need to get the air bubbles out. So we're going to shake it a little bit. Okay, now this is going to be insulated, as I said. What I'm going to use is an old cooler bag. Um, I'm going to place it here so you can see. And we are going to, I'll show you how to do this. That's the covering. I've got, I don't know if you know the, um, the material that they use for rescuing people. They have this, this material to cover them up to, when they have hypothermia. So this works very well for me. I'm going to place this in there. And I'm going to cover it. And then 
we will insulate it. Works very well this way. See it's nicely covered. We're going to insulate it, cover it like this. You can also use a blanket. Some people even just leave it on the counter, put a blanket over it and that's it. But if you want it to go really through a nice gel phase, just put it in a cooler bag and it'll work. Cover it up. Close it up. And this will stand in also at least 24 hours. The other soap as well. The other one I put in the fridge so that that one doesn't go through the gel stage. You don't want it to go through there. The, it, the gel stage also um, changes the color. You don't get the nice white colors. You get a more of a cream color. And um, so soaps are done differently. This one we will, and the other one we will cut tomorrow after 24 hours and I'll show you how to do that. And that's the exciting part when you open it up and you see the beautiful colors and the beautiful uh, shapes and flames and everything. And then it takes at least three, four weeks to six weeks to cure. You have to cure your soaps on, on a shelf where there's a lot of air. Um, and then you, then you can use it after four to six weeks. In the beginning, the soap might still have a bit of lye in it because it's now curing. So when we come back and we cut the soap, we, I will still use my gloves. Not that it's going to really burn you, but it might just have a little bit of a zap. Right, and don't worry if you make a flop. Anything can be remedied. I made a soap, as you can see on the slide, that had honey in it and it had some other uh, like carrot juice in it and honey it overheats this the soap and I even though I put it in the freezer I had it in the freezer f all night it's still it's still heated up in the middle and so the next morning when I cut it there was oil and glycerine and stuff oozing out of it and honey and so I thought okay am I going to waste all this and then I started to think I'm going to rebatch it. Now on the slide you will see there's a, a slow cooker and I just chopped up the, the soap and put it in the slow cooker and stirred it until it melted and it's, it's very effective. As you can see that was the, um, the way it looked then afterwards. It's still a beautiful soap. It foams like beautifully. It's a really good soap. Um, even though it's rebatched. So if you make a mistake, you make a flop, you can even correct it. If you had too much lye in your recipe, uh, you can correct it. Rebatch it, melt it again, add more oil. If you had too much oil, you can add more lye. So it, it's nice. You don't have to worry if you make a flop. <laughs> Now we come to the fun part. We are going to unmold the soap and then we will cut it. And if you have any pattern, like with the charcoal soap that we made, this is now the point where you are so excited to see what happened inside the soap. So let's unmold this one first. Normally if you use a, a silicone mold, it should unmold very easily. And I have this contraption and sometimes husbands are quite useful. I have, he made me this contraption, homemade thing, and it works very well to get even slices. So we're going to put it in there and then you measure whatever thickness you want to make your slice, your slices very even. Okay. That's done. Now you can use a, this is also a homemade contraption. I prefer the, the thinner one, a normal scraping 
utensil for painting and you will push it down through the soap and then move it out gently and there you have your slice. Let's do another one. Push it up against the, the wood there. Push it down and move it out. Isn't that amazing? So now you don't have to guess and you don't have to measure. Push it down. As I said in my soap demonstration, you should actually wear gloves at this point. But I know my soap already and I know that there's no extra lye in it at the moment and so it won't burn me but if you're not sure then wear gloves just in case because it hasn't matured yet, it hasn't cured. And this will take now four to six weeks to cure and you will have lovely soap. Can you see the, the pattern that we made on the top? It actually just makes it look so nice. This works so well, you have two slits in a little block of wood and you can move it backwards and forwards to um, give you the right size that you need. Now the next one that we made, the charcoal soap, won't fit in there unless I put it on its side. So maybe we can try and put it on its side. I hope that this soap will unmold easily because it takes a little longer, it's, there's no palm oil in it, so the palm oil makes it harder, so we actually have to hope that it'll come out nicely. If it doesn't, then you leave it another 12 hours to unmold. It's still quite soft, so we can just hope that it will unmold. Let's see what happens. That's why people like to use palm oil, because it makes the soap harder. This is still a little bit too soft to cut, but I will show you how to cut this one as well. We can put it on its side and then cut it that way. So now we are going to screw this down. No, that's too little. Let's make it slightly wider than the previous one. Great. I think I'm going to use the big one so that I can get it at the right angle. Oh, this is going to be difficult to undo. I'm just going to cut the first slice so you can see the inside because it's a little bit too soft to cut. But let's just look at what it did. Ah, you can see the pattern. Remember we went through the soap with a piece of wire and a straw. So now we have a lovely pattern inside your soap. It's slightly skewed. Maybe I'll try one more and see what it does. And I would leave this now for a half a day and then cut it. Let's try one more. Let's 
here we go. There we go. Lovely pattern. So, success. And I'm, I can promise you, if you start doing this, you will never stop. And you will always have something new to look forward to. And also, if you're not going to use all the soap that you're making, it makes a perfect gift. It is not too expensive to make, and people will love and appreciate a handmade bar of soap. So enjoy the, the demonstrations that we gave you, and I hope you enjoy making soap.